What's up everyone and welcome back to the MMA Zone. Today, let's get started with Aljamain Sterling confident TJ Dillashaw will likely be on PEDs for UFC 280. When Aljamain Sterling steps into the octagon to defend his bantamweight title at UFC 280, it will be against the man many consider to be the greatest bantamweight of all time, TJ Dillashaw. The fight will be a highly anticipated showdown years in the making. After Dillashaw reclaimed his bantamweight title in 2017 by defeating Cody Garbrandt, he cemented his status as champion by defending the belt the following year. Unfortunately, after that, Dillashaw made the move to flyweight, where he suffered a brutal first round KO at the hands of Henry Cejudo. After the fight, it was revealed that the bantamweight champion had tested positive for EPO and would be stripped of the 135 pound title. It would be two and a half years until Dillashaw would fight in the octagon again. After serving a two year suspension, Dillashaw made his return to the octagon last summer against Corey Sanhagen where he picked up a split decision win. With a win over a top ranked bantamweight like Sanhagen, Dillashaw was posed for a title shot. Despite that, it would take another year for him to be booked for a title fight against Aljamain Sterling. Now, with just under two weeks to go until Dillashaw has the opportunity to reclaim UFC gold against bantamweight champion Aljamain Sterling at UFC 280 in Abu Dhabi, the champ is pretty confident that his opponent will be using performance enhancing drugs. On an episode of The Fighter vs. The Writer, Sterling spoke about the situation and Dillashaw's failed drug test, saying, I already made peace with that, that there's an op a, a chance that I'm going to be fighting a guy who's going to be souped up. And I think a lot of guys I've fought in the past have been on some anyway, so this isn't going to be any different. Of course, it is important to mention that after Dillashaw was flagged for EPO, USADA went back to test all the B samples from his previous fights. Upon review, it was discovered that no other sample provided by Dillashaw tested positive for performance enhancing drugs throughout the course of his UFC career. Despite that, it seems as though the MMA community hasn't forgiven Dillashaw's past transgressions. Anthony Smith isn't doubting Charles Oliveira ahead of UFC 280. In recent years, Charles Oliveira has continued to prove himself as one of the best fighters in the UFC. With only one loss since making the transition to lightweight, Oliveira has continued to dominate the division. Despite that, throughout the course of his title reign, fighters have continued to count him out, time and time again. Leading up to his vacant lightweight title fight against Michael Chandler back in 2021, the former Bellator MMA champion proclaimed that he believes Oliveira is a quitter. The sentiment proved to be wrong, however, it was something that came up again the following year in the midst of Oliveira's buildup to UFC 274, where he was set to fight Justin Gaethje. Leading up to that fight, Gaethje explained that he also believes Oliveira quits when the going gets tough. Ahead of the upcoming UFC 280 vacant title fight between Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev, UFC light heavyweight Anthony Smith is done counting the former champ out. He spoke on the fighter versus the writer, saying, I always, always like, I don't want to see discredit, but I, I always doubt Charles Oliveira. And then afterwards I tell myself, fuck, why you do that? <laughs> like, because I have a lot of respect for that guy, but then, you know, even going into the Poirier fight, I'm like, well, Corey is kind of the uncrowned champion here. And, and you know, I, I, I believe in Charles Oliveira, but I mean, I think Poirier gets this done. And I did the same thing with Chandler. And I, like, I'm not doing it anymore. With time winding down until the pair collide inside the octagon with the 155 pound title on the line, it seems to be anyone's fight. The way the odds currently have it, Makachev is currently the betting favorite, with the former champion being a slight underdog. Do you think Oliveira is poised to shock the world again on October 22nd? Or will Makachev continue his winning ways and secure UFC gold? Next up, Ryzen looking to book Floyd Mayweather vs Nate Diaz. In recent years, undefeated boxer Floyd Mayweather has continued to take part in exhibition bouts under the Ryzen banner. After calling it a career on the heels of defeating Conor McGregor in 2017, Mayweather took part in an exhibition boxing bout against Tenshin Nasukawa at Ryzen 14. The bout was one that had many scratching their heads considering Nasukawa was a highly touted kickboxer. Two years later, Mayweather signed to fight controversial internet personality Logan Paul in an exhibition bout. Ultimately, the exhibition was postponed and the pair would meet the following year in 2021. This year, however, Mayweather really ramped up the exhibition boxing as he took part in back-to-back -back exhibition bouts, the most recent of which took place under the Ryzen banner. With the year winding down, Mayweather is gearing up to take part in another bout, indicating that he has plans to continue the exhibition tour. 
Now, in an interview with MMA Mania, Ryzen boss and former Pride FC head Nobuyuki Sakigabara has expressed interest in working with the Diaz brothers once again. Of course, Nick Diaz famously fought for Pride FC under Sakigabara, however, it's Nate Diaz that the promotion is targeting about for. He spoke on a recent episode of Broad and Horizon, saying, We have to target the international audience. So with that said, Floyd's opponent doesn't have to be a Japanese fighter anymore. It's just one possibility thinking about the future. Not only Floyd's opponent, but Nate Diaz as an individual has a great amount of character, fight style, and a great following internationally. So, as an individual, he would definitely be somebody we'd be interested in talking to. Although a potential Nate Diaz Floyd Mayweather bout wasn't on anybody's bingo cards for the upcoming year, the bout will without a doubt quickly become the talk of the MMA community. Do you think the pair will actually box one another? Or is this all just wild hypotheticals? Give us your thoughts in the comment section down below and before we continue, make sure you give that like button some love and be sure to subscribe to the MMA Zone for all of the latest news. Benil Dariush questions Alexander Volkanovsky declaring himself backup fighter for UFC 280. This week, reigning featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky revealed that after having his hand cleared by a doctor, he had signed on to be the backup fighter for UFC 280's vacant lightweight title between Charles Oliveira and Islam Makachev. Should either man be unable to compete for the 155 pound title, it will be Volkanovsky who steps in to compete for the vacant belt. The news came as a surprise to many, most notably Benil Dariush, who had already agreed to be the backup fighter for the bout. Although he is set to face Mateusz Gumrud on the card, the fact that the UFC has reportedly agreed to let Volkanovski be the backup fighter doesn't sit too well with the streaking contender. During a recent interview on Sirius XM, Dariush spoke about the situation, saying, Honestly, I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I'm not sure if he's playing games or the UFC is playing games because I was told I'm the fill-in. I've know? read that uh, too. I was, I mean, that's the whole point of having another lightweight fight on that card, just so, just in case something goes wrong. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I don't understand what, what, what uh, what's going on here. So I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom of it, but ultimately, you know, I have one goal and that's, uh, it's Gamrot. But I, I really thought I was the fill in. That's what I was told. What also makes the situation even more complicated is that Volkanovski revealed that if his services aren't needed as a backup fighter for UFC 280, at least he knows he's likely next in line for a 155 pound title shot. For a streaking contender like Dariush who believes he already earned himself a title shot and wants to use his UFC 280 fight to cement his number one contender status, the situation is a tough one. Depending on how things shake out, it will be interesting to see who gets the next lightweight title shot and how the UFC navigates the situation following UFC 280. And now for our breaking news story of the day, we have ESPN reporter Brent Okamoto announcing that the UFC is working on the Leon Edwards vs. Kamara Usman trilogy for UFC England in March. Are you guys excited for this fight? Let us know who you think is going to win the trilogy down in the comment section below. Last up, UFC announces several high-profile bouts for upcoming cards. It is a great time to be a fight fan. With UFC 280 less than two weeks away and a stacked lineup of fights for the coming weeks and months, there is plenty of bouts to look forward to. This week, the UFC announced several high-profile matchups that already have fight fans talking. First up, we have a light heavyweight clash between Alexander Gustafsson and Ovin St. Pru on tap for UFC 282 on December 10th. The former light heavyweight title challenger is in the midst of a four-fight skid that most recently saw him return to 205 pounds earlier this year, where he suffered a first-round KO to Nikita Krylov. Prior to that, Gustafsson tried his hand at heavyweight, where he dropped a first-round submission to former champion Fabricio Verdum. On the other side of things, Ovin St. Pru is coming off a split decision win over Shogun Hua at UFC 274 this year, which snapped a two-fight skid going back two years. Next up, we have a pivotal heavyweight fight between two fan favorites, Tai Tuivasa and Sergei Pavlovich. The two men are set to meet at UFC Orlando on December 3rd, where Tuivasa will look to bounce back from a loss to Sidel Gan earlier this year in Paris. 
On the flip side of things, Pavlovich is in the midst of a four-fight winning streak that saw him make a triumphant return to the octagon earlier this year. After picking up two straight KO wins in 2022, Pavlovich will look to climb the rankings in this heavyweight contender showdown. Last but certainly not least, we have another UFC Orlando showdown between Nico Price and Phil Rowe. For Price, he will be looking to kick the year off strong after defeating Alex Oliveira via unanimous decision last year to return to the win column. On the flip side of things, Phil Rowe will look to extend his win streak to three after picking up back-to-back -back TKO wins to close out 2021 and kick off 2022. With December rapidly approaching, we want to hear from you. How do you see these three December showdowns going? Sound off in the comment section down below. Today's video was packed with some juicy stories from the fight world. What are your thoughts about what's going on in MMA? Don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to the MMA Zone to see more videos just like this. See you next time.